Okay, so in this video, we'll just go over some of the strategies that we've seen for integration in this section and do a couple of more examples for practice. Okay, so for instance, here's the integral secant times tangent divided by secant squared minus secant. And there are a number of ways to approach this integral. And as usual, I'll ask that you pause this for a few minutes, maybe try answering this yourself and come back afterwards. So pause the video now. Okay, so what did you come up with? Did you try a substitution? Or maybe you tried simplifying your integral first? Well, some of you probably tried making the substitution u equals secant theta. And that's because the derivative of secant is secant times tangent. And you see that, well, you already have secant times tangent in the numerator here. So it is an easy substitution to make, and we get 1 over u squared minus u du as a result. From this point on, you can use partial fraction decomposition, and you don't even have to go through like that whole process of setting a and b to be coefficients. You can just guess, uh, actually, <laughs> what it is here. Um, it's going to involve a 1 and a 1, and the sign, you... Yep, so that's the correct sign, right? And you can check that this is the correct um, decomposition here by combining the two fractions and showing that you get this expression back. Okay, so now that we have expressed this rational function as a difference of the reciprocals of linear terms, now you can just take the ln for the antiderivative, and finally plug in your secant back. And you're done, right? That's the antiderivative, that's the integral. Now, let's try another technique. I mentioned that some of you may have tried simplifying this first. So what do you get when you try simplifying? Okay, so all the terms have a secant. Right, so you can actually factor out the secant from the denominator and you're just going to be left with secant theta minus 1. And what is that equal to? So all trig functions can be written as sines and cosines. Right? So tangent is sine over cosine. Secant is 1 over cosine. So, well, we can multiply the top and the bottom by cosine. and then multiply the top and the bottom by 1 plus cosine. And this is something standard here, because what it allows me to do is to write the denominators 1 minus cosine squared, which in turn is just sine squared, meaning sine term cancels. And I'm just left with 1 plus cosine over sine. So you probably have seen this trick identity before. Sine over 1 minus cos is 1 plus cos over sine. And now that breaks up easily into just cosecant theta plus cotangent theta. And from here, you can apply your table of integrals to compute right, the antiderivative. And I just want to note here that, well, yet another way of doing this is not even going to sine and cosine. From this step, you could have also multiplied the top and the bottom by secant theta plus 1. Look at this. And secant squared minus 1 is tangent. So a copy of tangent is going to be cancelled, leaving you with one factor of tangent in the denominator. And this, broken up, gives you the same thing. Alright, so just for one question, we see on this slide three different ways of solving it. And you will get different forms for what the final answer looks like. And you'll see this a lot with integrals that um, involve trigonometry. In general, uh, there are a number of tips that you can think of when you're um, uh, encountering some of these integrals. Simplifying is always a good one to try first. Sometimes 
simple manipulation gets your integral into a form where you can immediately see what the appropriate method is. Otherwise, there are a number of methods that we've already seen, like integration by parts. Um, remember, that's uv minus v du. is when you can recognize your integral as u dv. And we use integration by parts when you can make the integral easier by differentiating one factor and integrating another. Right? And we, we've seen that before. Trigonometric functions here, as well, it pertains to that section where we had powers of cosine and powers of sine. Right? And depending on whether it's an even or an odd power, you use a substitution or some trig identities to simplify. You use inverse trig substitutions if you have, well, terms of the form x squared minus a squared, a squared minus x squared, or a squared plus x squared. Partial fractions if it's a rational function that you can decompose. And I don't think we talked about this, but the ra a rationalizing substitution is used where you can set u to be equal to the square root of something, right? And you can actually square both sides in this substitution rule before you compute your du. And you'll, you'll actually get, in some cases, a simpler expression for the integral without involving a square root. I'll give you an example here. dx over 1 minus the square root of x squared. Right, so right now it's not entirely obvious what substitution or what method we have to use here. But maybe I can just set u to be 1 plus square root of x. Right? So it's kind of like a rationalizing substitution here. Um, but you just have a plus 1 on the right. That's fine. I can write this as u minus 1 equals root x. Square both sides. And then take the derivative. Right, so the left side is 2u minus 1 du right it's just dx right and so what this allows me to do is well i don't have to worry about you know getting my integral into a form where i have my dx properly there because i just need the dx alone and that dx becomes 2u minus 1 du 1 plus root x squared well 1 plus root x is u so that's u squared and now i can break it up into an easy integral. So that's 2 ln u plus 2 over u plus c. And now you plug in your 1 plus root x for u. And that's it. Again, you can always check your work. Take the derivative. You'll see that you get the same thing back.